with TYT Politics back uh, by my, you know, little pull-out bed by my desk. I don't sit on my bed. I'm actually sitting at a desk. For everyone that's always bugging me about it, I'm sitting at a desk. I, um, Jordan and I and the whole reporting team, Nomiki and uh, Michael, were in LA this week. Uh, it, it was really great to get to know everyone. Really exciting. So uh, go check out those videos. Go check uh, them out on the main show. Go check out our videos on TYT Politics from that week and uh, I can't wait to get back to giving you the news again from the daybed and from the desk. So uh, Neil Gorsuch's nomination process has begun. He is obviously Donald Trump's pick for the Supreme Court and uh, I'm against him ideologically. I don't agree with him. I'm gonna give you a, bit, a little bit of a layout of, the, of what he actually believes because you may not know uh, his, his his legislative history. The, thi mo th the thing that's most troubling to me is his view on Citizens United. I think money and politics is the number one, two, and three issue in the country because it affects all the other issues. Uh, but here, uh, Tiffany Muller, the executive director at End Citizens United, a PAC dedicated to reforming the campaign finance system, uh, urged the group's more than three million members to contact their senators to vote against Gorsuch's nomination. So he is clearly quite terrible uh, at the uh, on this specific issue. Uh, our concern is, this is Tiffany Muller, uh, that we have seen with this nominee a continuation of the same type of precedent that we saw in Citizens United and dark money groups are already announcing that they're going to be that they are going to buy big ads to prop up this nominee. Muller tells Newsweek referencing the 2010 Citizens United Supreme Court decision, etc. Our grassroots members are prepared to take on any of these groups. Um, he also, uh, though he applied the strict scrutiny standard uh, to the cases that he used involving Citizens United in the past, he said, and I quote, that politico political donations were expressly protected by the First Amendment. Here's his quote. No one before us disputes that the act of contributing to political campaigns implicates a basic constitutional freedom, one lying at the foundation of a free society and enjoying a significant relationship to the right to speak and associate, both expressly protected First Amendment activities. Even so, the court has yet to apply strict scrutiny, blah, blah, blah. So he said that uh, contributing and using money to speak is a basic constitutional freedom. Obviously, I vehemently disagree with it. Again, I wrote my thesis vehemently disagreeing with that very legal standard uh, and that legal argument. So, no good news there on the Citizens United front. And here is what Chuck, Schum Chuck Schumer, the Senate Minority, Le eh, Senate Minority Leader, uh, said about Gorsuch this week. Judge Gorsuch may act like a neutral, calm judge, but his record and his career clearly show that he harbors a right-wing, pro-corporate, special interest agenda. You know, uh, Schumer may not be expre expressly right-wing, but he himself shows a pretty pro-corporate, pro-Wall Street agenda, so the messenger is completely off, but that's who the Democrats have chosen to be their leader. Hurrah! Um, the offensive that the Democrats are going on is also as follows. Uh, Democrats are uh, planning a sprawling offensive targeting everything from Gorsuch's rulings during his decade as a judge on the 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to his involvement in the George W. Bush era anti-terror tactics as the top Justice Department lawyer to, uh, to, perhaps his Gor to perhaps Gorsuch's biggest liability, Trump himself, and the president's attack on the multiple judges who have rebuked him. Uh, in her 15-minute opening remarks, Feinstein, ra Senator Feinstein, raised concerns about Gorsuch's rulings involving workers' rights, such as his decision against the Trans Am truck driver who was fired for leaving his trailer in sub-zero temperatures, and his writings that the California Democrat sh uh, said incites Gorsuch would vote to overturn Roe v. Wade. So basically, uh, all of the Democrats are united against him. They think that he's against workers' rights. They think that he's pro-corporate. Obviously, his Citizens United decision, no one really seems to be writing about that, but that's what concerns me a little bit more. Um, there are, there's more things of concern. He defended the date rape fraternity at his that he was maybe a part of at, at uh, Columbia. He also, uh, in at least 19 columns, published in the Daily Spectator, which was Columbia's newspaper, uh, and the Federalist paper, the conservative paper that uh, Gorsuch founded, the future federal appellate judge wrote sneering takedowns of liberal students on campus and their causes. No, uh, no uh, surprise there. He's a conservative. He also argued for what he saw as unpopular beliefs at the time, including university investments in apartheid South Africa, 
on-campus military recruitment, a pro-Reagan stance in the Iran-Contra affair, and consistently for Columbia's all-male fraternities. The, the one about including a university investments in apartheid South Africa is especially concerning to me because that means that he may have some extremely racist tendencies as well, which obviously should come as no surprise, but when you're advocating for sending money to an apartheid country while the rest of your student body is against it and probably protesting, uh, that's concerning to me. So the Democrats are planning to oppose this nomination, even though on paper he's quite uh, quite qualified. He has a laundry list of experience, he went to Ivy League schools, and he is apparently scalia light. He looks up to Antonin Scalia as someone who he thinks is principled, when we, by the way, know that he's not. Scalia is all for states' rights, except uh, when Bush is going to win the presidency, then he decides to change his stance a little bit. So, uh, that, that, that man was not a principled individual, and uh, Ra, Ra, uh, excuse me, <coughs> Gorsuch is in his vein. So I don't agree with him ideologically, but I have a bit of a nuanced opinion on this. So I studied a lot of judicial history in college, and I don't love the, politic the politicization of the judicial nominating process. It's very complicated, and I'm going to take you down, you know, in history... Uh, when this politicization began. I think that because the Republicans did such an unprecedented thing when they blocked uh, Merrick Garland and they just refused to nominate him, the Democrats do have to fight back. But I really would like to see the beginning of a process where we do not politicize nominees anymore. Trump is a conservative, or whatever we think he is, we, he's going to nominate a conservative judge, you know, he's a Republican president. That's no surprise. Sucks. The Democrats lost. I disagree with everything that this guy stands for, pretty much, but it's kind of like tough shit. We lost. And the Republicans, you know, they, they should have, they, they should never have blocked Merrick Garland, but the Democrats they fell into that because of their own weakness and because they began the politicization process back in the 80s. And this is what I want to take you guys through. So Robert Bork, uh, he was the Solicitor General in the Nixon administration and he played a pretty crucial role in the whole Watergate scandal um, in which uh, what, what became known as the Saturday Night Massacre, which they tried to say Trump was doing that um, when he fired Sally Yates, it wasn't exactly the same. The Nixon thing was way more extreme, um, but he fired Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox uh, after the Attorney Gen General and Deputy Attorney General wouldn't uh, refuse Nixon's order to quit. So Nixon was obviously a pretty demagogy president, um, and Nixon promised Bork a seat, and, but he couldn't because obviously he was forced to resign after his impeachment. After that, Robert Bork spent five years as a federal appeals, appeals court uh, judge and then was nominated by Reagan to the Supreme Court in 1987. And Bork was an extremely controversial nominee. So before Bork, the president, uh, the Supreme Court picks by the president were largely unpoliticized. The Democrats would ask them questions, but honestly end up voting, or any other way around, the Republicans would ask questions, but honestly would end up voting just because, hey, look, this this president doesn't agree with me ideologically, but the Constitution affords them the protection uh, and the power to appoint judges. So they kind of just let them go through. But until Robert Bork. Um, because of Bork's history in Watergate and because of these legal writings where he, one, opposed the 1964 civil, right, civil rights law that required hotels, restaurants, other places of business to, uh, to serve people of all races, he opposed that. Two, he opposed the 1965 Supreme Court decision that struck down the law uh, banning con contraceptives for married couples, so he opposed that, and that was in 65, so he was over 20 years behind the times, and he also opposed laws on gender equality. So the Democrats decided, hey, we're going to fight this guy with all we've got. Robert Bork uh, was mostly politicized, or mostly opposed by Ted Kennedy. He spearheaded that effort, and he said, Robert Bork's America is a land in which women would be forced into back alley abortions, blacks would sit at segregated lunch counters, rogue police could break down citizens' doors in midnight raids, school children could not be taught about evolution, writers and artists could be censored at the whim of the government, and the doors of the federal courts would be shut uh, out would be shut on the th fingers of millions of citizens. 
Uh, in the end, Bork was actually defeated by a vote of 58 to 42, which was the largest margin in history. And the whole episode, by the way, enraged many Republicans. So Bork's name became kind of a symbol of conservative hatred and grievance towards Democrats, um, and it became a new verb to Bork. So are the Democrats going to Bork Neil Gorsuch? I doubt it. But what happened in 87 was it set forth a motion, uh, set, set forward a motion of politicization of Supreme Court nominees. So post-Bork, these hearings have been extremely political. You've really gotten very few answers out of them, uh, and no straight answers are really given. Uh, the Senate hearings have really not shed a light on what these nominees actually believe. Uh, the rhetorical version of dodgeball is a favored tactic, this is from the New York Times, of nominees regardless of where they stand on the political spectrum. It has been employed, success employed successfully by a liberal like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and by a conservative like Clarence Thomas. John G. Roberts Jr. at the 2005 Senate hearing on his nomination as Chief Justice famously likened his role to that of an umpire calling balls and strikes a disinterested neutral force. He did not mention, as Chief Justice, he would have a mighty hand in shaping and the contours of the strike zone. So uh, that's what happens when you politicize these judicial nominees. You don't get any straight answers out of them, and we don't really know where they stand ideologically. So what I foresee in this, uh, in this Gorsuch nomination is hearings that just have a variety of platitudes and just allow Democrats to stand up and give their, you know, 2020 campaign speech. I'm sure Cory Booker will be at the forefront of this one. And it doesn't really add anything to the conversation. So, look, the presidential power allows for them to nominate Supreme Court justices. If we continue down this path, we will never have a court and we will never get things to go through. I disagree with Robert, uh, excuse me, with Neil Gorsuch on almost everything, but I do hope that we can get to a process again where it is not so politicized and heavily partisan. Um, the Democrats, I think, are responding appropriately to Gorsuch based on the obstructionism of what the Republicans did under Merrick Garling, which was even more unprecedented than this Robert Bork thing. But I do think that since the 80s, there's been a chain of politicization that is actually harmful to the country. Um, I am not a Republican, I'm not a conservative, but I do want to be consistent and say that if there were a Democrat president, again, under Bush, I mean, under Obama, I didn't want the politicization of the Merrick Garland thing, even though I wish he was more liberal, but I did want Scalia's seat filled with someone who wasn't going to be a crazy person, and now look what we have. So I want to put a cog, or I, or I want to stop some of this process uh, before it gets out of hand. It seems like it's kind of is. And by the way, they're not going to be successful, the Democrats. They don't have the numbers. Gorsuch is qualified and he's going to get through. So, depressing, but I hope that we can go uh, back to a time when the judiciary is actually independent of politics. Um, and call me an idealist, but maybe, uh, maybe that's possible. Okay, bye guys.